Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 543, and we are live in Southwest Florida watching the sunrise over the building from the trees to the east. And this is the beautiful Gulf of Mexico behind me. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you have any questions for me, if there's anything you want to share with me and or all of us, the community of awesome people that join me live every morning when I do the podcast. But if you also watch the recorded version, which I know lots of people do, it is, we would love to hear from you as well. So please comment in the recorded version. I get notified and can uh, talk to you as well. Good morning, Joe. Hi. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Judy. Yeah, it's, it's windy. The waves are rough. The colors are great. It's a good morning. Hi, Christine. Hi, G. Uh, yes, the waves are strong this morning. The wind is strong and so are the waves. <laughs> warm out but it's not cold out the wind makes me feel chillier definitely for me wind always makes me feel chillier this way it doesn't matter though I'm on a public beach it's fine <laughs> hi sunshine good morning I know it takes a few seconds for people to pop over from uh, free chat or notifications Hi, I'm Melinda. Hi, Sunshine. Joe, I didn't catch what you said, but I know you love my jean jacket. Yes, I love it too. It's one of the Lucky Brand jean jackets, which has this amazing feature of the inside pockets. When I wear this jacket, I often don't need to carry a wallet or a purse, or, not a, or at least not a purse. I can fit my phone in there, my keys in there, and I can fit my wallet in there. Pretty amazing. Oh, I'm also wearing but you'll recognize these are pants from my red bubble shop and this is one of the tank tops one of the long tunic style tank tops in my amazon shop too haven't worn this in a while but you know i still haven't worn still haven't worn real pants around my waist yet since um surgery so i'm still just wearing rib uh not ribbings leggings i don't know why i said that hi uh lucy hi Rita. So I, I've really only worn leggings for the whole month, and I don't know if I've ever done that in my entire life. Uh, I miss my jeans, but I'm not ready for that kind of constriction around my waist yet. In a couple of weeks. Hi, Lily. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Gay. Thanks for joining live, everybody. Welcome back to the Create Share Inspire podcast. If you're joining live, please say hello. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to share with us or if you have any questions for me. For those of you who have already pre-ordered 52 crochet gifts, I launched four new patterns this week. And if you have not ordered it or pre-ordered it yet, there is a blog post for the week 14 update which will show you all of the patterns that are released so far. I think we're up to 38 now and four maybe 39 somewhere in that range and four were released this week including some earrings a bookmark um, a bag and what else earrings bookmark a bag does anybody else remember oh and a bowl and a bowl really beautiful beautiful gift ideas uh not only for holidays or birthdays but for those special times when you just want to send someone a pick-me-up, a thinking of you gift. These are all quick gifts and that's the whole point of the book 52 Crochet Gifts is that yes, these are great resources for birthdays and holidays but they are also great resources that are not holiday specific or themed to anything that don't take long to make that you can give as a pick-me-up or a thinking of you gift throughout the year. Many of these patterns are unisex or the types of gifts that you could give anybody. Uh, hi, Frieza Bee. Thanks for joining live. And we will be finishing wrapping. It's not going to be two patterns a week for the rest of the 52. We are going to be 
finishing it up in the next few weeks and launching the whole thing. So if you would like to take advantage of the sale on it, you get a discount on the ebook as well as will receive a coupon code for a discount on the hardcover book. Once everything comes out, they will both go back to full price. So at the moment, I believe that's around a $12 savings total if you participate in the pre-order. $5 savings on the ebook now, and then in the future, you'll receive a $7 coupon when the paperback comes out. Anyway, uh, so if you want to participate in it, it's still going on for a few more weeks. If not, it will be launched and full price orders over. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about any of the new patterns or any of that? Also released a new tutorial video yesterday for another type of bookmark and I didn't bring it with me this morning but um, I hopefully some of you watched the video. If not you can uh, certainly find it on my YouTube channel here. Hi Melissa and it is a pattern from 52 Crochet Gifts it is a corner bookmark that's made out of two heart motifs that are joined along the bottom and then not joined at the top so that it ends up being a corner that you can place over your spot on a book. And the reason why I uh, designed two different types of bookmarks for the, the book 52 Crochet Gifts is because I think bookmarks are such an amazing gift to give someone, especially when you are going to um, be giving a gift, a, a book. So whether you're giving someone a copy of a book they're excited about or a book you want to share with them or giving them a journal or any other type of book, the most wonderful way to add a personalized touch to a store-bought book is to slide a bookmark that you can make either over the corner like the Palmer um, corner bookmark or the flat kind, like the beautiful Deirdre bookmark that is the brand new pattern this week. That one features Be So Fine Bling yarn, which looks absolutely gorgeous in, a, uh, in the bookmark. And then I also made the corner bookmark out of Be So Baby yarn. You could definitely substitute different yarns for bookmarks simply because there is no gauge requirement. And even for the Deirdre bookmark, I made it rather large for a large book. But if you wanted to make it smaller for a small book, you would just do less repeats in there. Or if you wanted to make that beautiful stitch pattern into a scarf, you would make more repeats. There's no wrong way to um, alter a bookmark. There's no wrong way to do that. I mean, if you wanted to make it shorter or longer, it's very, very easy to do. And the pattern, like all the other patterns, include the written instructions, the charts, and um, whether they have the definitely will all be getting video tutorials. Does anybody have any questions? Hi Pamela. I'm excited about the book too. Kansas is cold in Winter Haven, Florida. Yeah, you're a couple hours north of me. I'm sure it's chillier there. It's not too bad when the wind dies down here. Lily wants to move to Florida. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Reason B's excited about the book. Me too. I was just uh, trying to count up how many how many books I've written since I started in independently publishing. And I was trying to figure out what year I wrote the first one. So it turns out that Motif Magic, the first book that I independently published, meaning I wear all the hats from publisher, author, director, uh, uh, stylist, photographer, marketer. I do everything except the editing, obviously. No one can edit their own work properly. Um, but I've been wearing all the hats and publishing my own books without a publishing house since 2018. So since then I've written Motif Magic, 80 Handmade Gifts, Layers Crochet, Layers Knit, 52 Crochet Gifts, and seven Create, Share, Inspire notebooks. I've curated the quotes and 
and published. I've done seven of these and uh, translated five of them into Spanish. So I don't know if we're really going to count those as full author books, but I've done 12. I've published 12 Create, Share, Inspire notebooks in two languages and completely published five craft books, all uh, in a little over two years. That's amazing. And um, definitely going to be part of the press release when I publish, uh, when I do release the featured crochet gifts. I really want to try to get it to as many news sources as possible. So I was actually thinking that once I write the press release, I'll release it as a blog post as well on my website. And then maybe there's one way that you all can help me as well. And you could release the, you could share the um, press release with people that you know and maybe media outlets that you are interested that you um, are interested in, whether it's your local papers or your favorite craft magazines or your favorite whatevers. Uh, anybody that publishes news and articles, I was wondering if maybe we could do it grassroots and uh, you could help me with that. That would be kind of fun. And it would cost you nothing. So, Reasonably says she'll share. Thank you. Yeah, I was just thinking about that this morning that, you know, I work so hard and I'm still just a tree in the forest most of the time. And maybe I just need to really be asking asking for the simple help just asking for the simple things like sharing because it's with your help through sharing my work my charity um, in fact that's something you could share with new sources now the um, blog post that i wrote recently about the new buy one give one uh, uh the new buy one give one uh, what's the word initiative with my charity project Kristen cares if you could take that blog post and share it with all your favorite news sources and media sources and maybe it's entertainment news and maybe it's uh, female news or maybe it's uplifting positive news or maybe it's traditional news anywhere that you could share that blog post would be really helpful because maybe someone would pick it up and uh, maybe some bigger news source would pick it up and it could grow my audience so it would cost you nothing but a little bit of time so i know lots of people would love to help me from time to time and that's something i think that we can do together collectively to grow my my story to grow my message to the world and to grow my products and my education and all the things that i do to teach people how to live a more peaceful and craftier life so if you would like to share that that might be a good place to start Oh, I think I have a side conversation going on. Okay, I'm not missing that much then. <laughs> the other thing that's new since we last spoke on the Monday podcast is that I uh, released Be So Baby Yarn in a lot more colors. So those of you that have tried Be So Baby Yarn so far uh, already know that it is baby soft, feels amazing on the skin, which means it's wonderful for babies. It's also hypoallergenic and very good for skin sensitivity so a lot of people have been enjoying using it for chemo hats i've made a chemo hat out of it before um, it's also great <clears throat> for anybody with wool allergies or animal allergies but again it is baby soft so it's great for anybody it's dk weight which means it's projects that you can work up pretty quickly and it now comes in 28 colors and i focused some of the new colors on you know things with richer richer hues and more saturated to encourage people to try it for home deck and afghans and things that would go in your house or maybe making things for men as well there's lots of masculine friendly colors in the new collection within the 28 colors there's things for women men babies home deck you name it and it is baby soft it is great for skin sensitivities, great for chemo caps, great for people with wool allergies, and just absolutely gorgeous colors. And you can't pick a wrong combination. They're all so pretty together, but there really is a huge spectrum of colors now. So it is also still only $3.99. It's on sale still, so it is definitely a great bargain. $3.99, and you get 142 yards per 50 gram ball. And again, that is a number three DK weight yarn. Does anybody have questions about that? Thanks, Thea. 
Don't worry, I read typo. Nar just wants to know how Marlon's doing. Marlon's doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Hi, Marsha. The beach is very busy this morning. I had to stay, I had to park in the parking structure this morning, which you know is one of the reasons why I had to bump up the time of the podcast for the beach is because the parking structure doesn't open as early as I used to come. And so uh, this time of year, the street parking is near impossible to grab. So um, in order to be guaranteed parking when I come to the beach and not be stressed out about it in the morning, I had to bump the podcast later. Well, that means a couple of things. Number one, I get a parking space every time I come now, but it also means the beach is busier. So you'll see a lot more activity uh, a lot more funny looks at us probably, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, I'll turn the camera around so you can see all the action down here. You can see there's lots of people down there. A few people up here. Can't even see what's going on down there because of the cabana, which is a nice little cabana, um, but there's a lot going on there. Yeah, less stress is good, Pamela. I used to stress out so much, in fact, you probably didn't realize is that a lot of the days when I did the podcast in my um, backyard, in the lanai in the backyard, back porch, is that those were days that I had driven to the beach, realized there was no parking, and then rushed home in a panic and in a full sweat and tried to get back home in time to still not, to still be on time and do the podcast at my house without being prepared for it. So, um, yeah, that kind of stress is just very fun and so uh, not that I don't enjoy doing the podcast in my backyard sometimes and I certainly love the way the kitties participate with us but anything is more fun when you've chosen to do it not when you've had to scramble and be in a cold sweat and heart elevated while you're worrying about having to make last minute decisions and I used to have to do that all the time <laughs> you know how often people would be to say oh I wish you were at the beach and I'd be like me too <laughs> but I don't like to complain so I just thought that it was uh, a great opportunity now that it's fixed to tell you the backstory about it because <laughs> I certainly do prefer to come to the beach as well now having said that because I'm still on weight restrictions I still want to do some videos and or live streams from my home so I can show you some new products I can't carry them to the beach right now can't really carry much of anything so it would be fun to do some sort of sharing of things like that so we'll figure that out but in the meantime uh, at right now I'm considering keeping Monday and Thursday as the live stream podcast at the beach and then throughout the rest of the week I will be releasing videos at the same that same time every day and doing the premiere so that we can chat about it as well because I really enjoyed that this week and I know some of you that participated really did as well. So when I release the video, if I set it up for Premiere, we can have that live chat going on while the video is going on, which is an excellent opportunity for you to watch a video with me. And then if you have any questions as we're going, you can ask them to me right then and there, which I think is actually kind of the best of both worlds because I know some people have asked me before to do tutorials in the podcast and when I've done that that's been extremely difficult because I can't move the camera I can't see the questions so I feel like now with premieres on videos it gives us that live interaction that we love about the podcast but it gives us the tutorial component as well so I'm not going to call those the podcast. They are going to be tutorial videos. But now when I release tutorial videos going forward, you're going to get that added benefit from my videos that maybe you don't get from other videos that you watch on YouTube. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with other people's videos, but I do certainly try to set myself apart and make my videos and my channel and my message as great as I can. So one of the added benefits of my tutorial videos going forward is going to be that I will premiere them. Thank you, YouTube, for that new awesome feature. And you'll be able to watch with me and ask me anything as we watch the tutorial video together. Hi, Marsha. Isn't that great? Thanks, Freezeby. Did anybody watch? 
Did anybody watch the premiere this week of the Palmer Corner Bookmark? And if anybody would like to give your feedback about whether or not you enjoyed the premiere, you can tell other people who are watching right now, um, other people could read your testimonial, let's say, whether you thought it was a cool benefit or not. Joe enjoyed it, great, I'm glad. Melissa enjoyed it too, wonderful. Thea watched the replay. Oh, Thea, when you watch the replay, do you, or do you have the ability to see that live chat that went on during it? Thanks, Susan. I appreciate that. Susan, uh, Lucy watched it too, and she enjoyed it. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Judy says, I do everything 100 plus percent. I think it's so funny that you said that. One of my pet peeves is when people say 100 and 1% because I always say there's no such thing, right? You either have 100% to give or you don't. But 100 plus percent, I like because it reminds me of A plus for some reason and I always used to love getting A pluses uh, in school. Oh, Melissa says you can see the chat replay. Okay, fabulous. So that makes it even better because if you can watch the chat replay, so even if you don't get the opportunity to watch it live in the premiere with me and the other people who are joining live, chances are anybody that's asked a question is more than likely a common question and maybe would even be the question that you'd want answered. So it would be a great idea to watch that live chat or that previously live chat as you watch the video and then if there are any questions that come up where you're like yeah I want to know that too you can get the answer right there so wow good job YouTube that is fabulous I love it <laughs> well thanks to YouTube Marsha I didn't pull it off alone this is one I can't take full credit for <laughs> I really do love that though I love that feature up once the 52 crochet book releases and uh, not sure how much I'll share before the fact but we do have lots of other things that we're going to do this year. I definitely have goals of things I want to accomplish this year. Uh, oh yeah Judy I'm there too yes. I don't believe there were a ton of questions in the corner bookmark video but um, it also is a pretty simple project and pretty self-explanatory, so maybe there weren't that many questions anyways, but it never hurts to see. There, I think there were a couple. Maybe someone asked some things about the yarn or the hooks or something. Someone, there were questions. It doesn't hurt to read them. I see a bird behind us. Do you have a curious George of the life? I don't know if he's muddy or if he's just has darker feathers. He doesn't look quite like curious George, but... Man, I would love to lay down, close my eyes, and look at those babies for an hour. Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm. In fact, when you watch the Create Zen videos, that wouldn't be a bad idea sometimes, too. Watch it to enjoy the sunset and the view, but then re-watch it with your eyes closed to just enjoy the sounds. Mm. Yeah, they are fun today, Thea. I love all the different textures water though it's fun when it's rough it's fun when it's glassy and calm it's fun when it's everything in between i love the stormy days i love the dark days i love the sunny days i love the muted colors i love the super saturated colors i mean every day is different at the beach but they're all uniquely amazing right i know a lot of you agree with me there Um, I reached out to somebody, somebody who's famous who crochets uh, a couple days ago and actually invited them to be on the podcast because I thought it might be fun to interview somebody who is very famous and crochets. In a, they're in a completely different industry and they uh, use crochet as a downtime relaxer before doing their regular professional job and it's very cool and waiting to hear back from him if he'll agree to being interviewed on the podcast. But maybe there are other people that you know of who are 
famous but also knit and crochet and if there's anyone you'd like me to try to reach out to to interview for the podcast that might be kind of fun right if there's anybody that you would like to see me reach out to if you want to leave their names or their contact information in the comments maybe not in the live stream right now but as soon as this goes recorded where those comments can stay um i would love yeah a lot of people do it judy and why don't we just start reaching out to them? What's the worst they can say? No, right? Uh, wouldn't that be amazing for exposure? So if you, um, if you could save your requests for when it goes recorded, because then I'll be able to see the saved uh, comments, that would be really wonderful. I think it would be a fun side project to try to work on. Anyway, I have two Create, Share, Inspire notebooks with me today. So if somebody would like to pick number one or number six, I will randomly randomly pick a quote to share with all of you. One or six is what I have today. Joe says one. Ooh, this is wonderful. I love this one. And I love Ralph Waldo Emerson anyways. He always does good stuff. Um, Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. I've always, I, you know, I always like to talk about when people ask me about, you know, what I do and what industry I'm in and what would you say your career is like. And now I ever tell everybody is, you know what? I was a single mom. I didn't, I, I was a single mom to a two year old, terrified of kidnapping, terrified of all sorts of death threats and all sorts of crazy things. I had no money and no car and I just wanted to be able to stay home with my baby and work. I did not want to have to go and get a traditional job and put him in daycare. And so I blazed the trail in the craft industry because I learned how to knit and crochet when I was pregnant with said two-year-old. And so that's what this reminds me of. When people outside of our industry say, what do you do? I tell them that I blazed a trail in the craft industry. There is nobody that's done exactly what I did in craft. And I'm really, really proud of that. And thank you all for being here today because it wouldn't mean a darn thing if people didn't enjoy my patterns or my yarns or what I have to say or how I teach how um, or how I teach people to add more creativity in their lives. So, so thank you to all of you for allowing me to blaze a trail in the craft industry. So let's read again from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Or blaze a trail, whichever way you like to think of that. <laughs> Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the rough waves, the sounds, the beautiful colors, chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you. Well, I'll probably have a video tomorrow, and then we'll do the podcast again on Monday and Thursday next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.